Good afternoon. We are on Monday. The um, date is the 22nd of May, 2023. I have not recorded the Bible in one year since the 7th of May. I've just been too busy and I just could not fit it in. But I'm going to make an effort to begin again. And today... It will be Bible in One Year, Day 231. The last one was 2.30. And it will be the readings from Jeremiah, chapter 36, 37, Isaiah 35, the Gospel of Matthew 24, verses 1 to 28. But the font of this Bible... It's very small, so I'll probably be leaning over it 99% of the time because otherwise I won't be able to read it properly. I'll begin with just two prayers. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Angel of God, my guardian dear, to whom God's love commits me here, Ever this day be at my side to light and guard, to rule and guide. Amen. Holy Michael, Archangel, defend me in this day of battle. Be my safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, I humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, thrust down to hell Satan, and all the wicked evil spirits who wander through the world for the ruin of souls. Amen. Before reading sacred scripture, open my heart, O Holy Spirit, to receive your inspired word. Grant me wisdom to understand what you want to teach me, and strength of will to follow wherever you lead. Amen. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. The Sufferings of Jeremiah, a reading from, I'm just going to double check I'm on the right one, chapter 36 and the title is The Scroll is Burned and forgive me that my head is right down but this these words are so small I haven't heard back from the bookshop that is going to order me a large print from America, I'll have to ring them soon. A reading from Jeremiah 36. This word from Yahweh came to Jeremiah in the fourth year of Jehoiakim, son of Josiah. Get a scroll and write on it all that I have spoken to you concerning Jerusalem, Judah and all the nations. From the first day I spoke to you in the time of Josiah until this day. Perhaps when the people of Judah hear of all the afflictions I intend to send them, to make each of them turn away, they would decide to turn from their wicked ways. Hence I may forgive their wickedness and sin. Jeremiah then called Baruch, son of Neriah, who at his dictation wrote down on the scroll all the words Yahweh had spoken to him. Then Jeremiah commanded Baruch, I am in jail and cannot go to Yahweh's house, so you go to Yahweh's house on a day of fasting and read publicly all that you wrote as I dictated. Read it to all the people, <coughs> excuse me, sorry, of Judah, who come in from their towns. Perhaps they will entreat Yahweh, and each one will turn from his wickedness, for great is the wrath of Yahweh and the punishment with which he has threatened his people. So Baruch 
Neriah's son, did all that the prophet Jeremiah had commanded about this reading in the house of Yahweh. In the ninth month of the fifth year of Josiah's son, Jehoiakim, Kim, king of Judah, a fast before Yahweh was proclaimed to all the people in Jerusalem and all the people who came from the towns of Judah. Then in the house of Yahweh, Baruch read publicly the words of Jeremiah written in the scroll. This he did in the room of the secretary, Jemariah, Shaphan's son, in the upper court at the entry of the new gate of the house of Yahweh. When Micaiah, son of Gemariah, son of Shaphan, heard all of Yahweh's words written on the scroll, he went to the secretary's room in the king's house where all the officials were sitting. Elishama, the secretary, Deliah, son of Shemala, Elnathan, son of Akbor, Jemariah, son of Shaphan, Zedekiah, son of Hananiah, and the rest of the officials. Micaiah told them all that he had heard when Baruch read the contents of the scroll to the people. Then all the officials sent Jehudai, son of Netaniah, the son of Shelemiah, the son of Cushi, to say to Baruch, Bring the scroll from which you read to all the people and come. So Baruch went with the scroll in his hand they told him to sit down and read it to them, and Baruch read it to them. When they heard all that, they gazed at one another in fear and said, We ought to tell this to the king. They then asked Baruch, May we know how you wrote that? He said, as he dictated these words, I wrote them in ink on the scroll. Then the officials instructed Baruch, Jeremiah and you have to hide and let no one know where you are. They kept the scroll in the room of Elishama, the secretary, and went to the king in the courtyard and reported all to him. The king then sent Jehudai to bring him the scroll. Jehudai brought it from Elishamah's room and read it to the king and to all the officials standing around him. Now it was the ninth month and the king was sitting in the winter palace while a fire was burning in the fire pot in front of him. Whenever Jehudai finished reading three or four columns, the king would cut them off into pieces with the secretary's knife and cast them in the fire until the whole scroll was burned. Neither the king nor his officials were afraid when they heard all these words and they did not tear their garments and yet Elnathan, Deliah and Jemariah had urged the king not to burn the scroll but he did not listen. Instead, the king ordered the king's son Jeremiel and Serariah, son of Azrael, and Shelemiah, son of Abdeel, 
to arrest Baruch the secretary and Jeremiah the prophet. But Yahweh God had hidden them. A word of Yahweh came to Jeremiah after the king burned the scroll with the words. Baruch had written as Jeremiah dictated, Take another scroll and write on it all the words that were on the first one which Jehoiakim burned. And tell Jehoiakim this message of Yahweh. You have burned the scroll and you said, This man dared to write that the king of Babylon will certainly destroy this land. And wipe away from it men and animals. That is why Yahweh has spoken against Jehoiakim, king of Judah. Not one of his descendants will sit on the throne of David. His dead body will be exposed to the heat of the day and the chill of the night. I will ask him to account as well as his children and his attendants for their wickedness. I will pour out on them all the disasters and it will be the same for the people of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem. I have foretold against them because they have paid no attention. Then Jeremiah took another scroll and gave it to Baruch, son of Neriah, the secretary. He wrote on it all the words of the scroll that Jehoiakim, king of Judah, burned in the fire. And he added many more similar words. The word of the Lord. A reading from Jeremiah, chapter 37 and the title is Zedekiah Consults Jeremiah. Just Josiah's Zedekiah was appointed in Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, to be king of Judah in the place of Jehoiakim, son of Jehoiakim. But neither he nor his attendants nor the people of the land paid any attention to the words of Yahweh spoken through Jeremiah the prophet. King Zedekiah sent Jehuchal son of Shelemiah with the priest, Zehaniah son of Maesiah to Jeremiah to say, intercede for us with Yahweh our God. At that time, Jeremiah had not yet been imprisoned and he was still going about among the people. Pharaoh's army had come out of Egypt and when the Chaldeans heard of this, they withdrew from Jerusalem. Then the word of Yahweh came to Jeremiah the prophet. Yahweh the God of Israel has spoken. Say this to the king of Judah, who sent you to consult me. Pharaoh's army, which was on its way to help you, is about to return to its own land, and the Chaldeans will come back and attack this city. They will capture it and set it on fire. Do not deceive yourselves by saying that the Chaldeans are not to come back because they surely will. Even if you had defeated the whole Chaldean army and they were left with only wounded men, they would all come out of their tents and set fire to this city. The next title is Jeremiah in the Well. 
While the Chaldean army was withdrawing from Jerusalem because of the advance of Pharaoh's troops, Jeremiah left Jerusalem to go to the territory of Benjamin to receive an inheritance there. But upon reaching the Benjamin gate, he was stopped by a century, sentry named Urjar, Irijar, son of Shelemiah, son of Hananiah, who said, You are deserting to the Babylonians. Jeremiah answered, There is no truth in that. But Irijar did not listen. He nabbed Jeremiah and brought him to the officials. They were so angry with Jeremiah, they beat him and locked him in the house of Jonathan, the secretary, which had been transformed into a prison. Jeremiah was put in the dungeon cells and was kept there for a number of days. Then King Zedekiah sent for him and secretly questioned him in his house. Is there any word from Yahweh? Jeremiah replied, Yes, there is, and added, You will be handed over to the king of Babylon. Then Jeremiah said to King Zedekiah, What wrong have I done to you, to your servants or to the people, that you should have me imprisoned? Where are your prophets who said to you, the king of Babylon will never come to attack, attack you and destroy this land? Now listen to me, my lord. Take heed of my plea and do not send me back to the house of Jonathan the secretary, for there I am doomed to die. So King Zedekiah ordered that Jeremiah be transferred to the guard's court and that every day he be supplied with a loaf of bread from the baker's street until there was no more bread. So Jeremiah remained in the guard's court. The word of the Lord. So I now have to move backwards to Isaiah. A reading from Isaiah chapter 35. And the title is The Return of the Exiles. Let the wilderness and the arid land rejoice, the desert be glad and blossom. Covered with flowers, it sings and shouts with joy. Adorned with the splendour of Lebanon, the magnificence of Carmel and Sharon, they, my people, see the glory of Yahweh, the majesty of our God. Give vigour to weary hands and strength to enfeebled knees. Say to those who are afraid, have courage, do not fear. See, your God comes, demanding justice. He is the God who rewards the God who comes to save you. Then will the eyes of the blind be opened and the ears of the deaf unsealed. Then will the lame leap as a heart and the tongue of the dumb sing and shout. For water will break out in the wilderness and streams gush forth from the desert. The thirsty ground will become a pool the arid land springs of water. In the haunts where once reptiles lay, grass will grow with reeds and rushes. There will be a highway which will be called the way of holiness. No one unclean will pass over it, nor any wicked fool stray there. No lion will be found there nor any beast of prey. Only the redeemed will walk there, for the ransomed of Yahweh will return with everlasting joy upon their heads. They will come to Zion singing, 
gladness and joy marching with them, while sorrow and sighing flee away. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So I have to move forward to read from the Gospel of Matthew 24, verses 1 to 28. The ruin of Jerusalem and the end of the world. Jesus left the temple and as he was walking away, his disciples came to him and pointed out to him the imposing temple buildings. But he said, You see all this? Truly I say to you, not one stone will be left upon another here. All will be torn down. Later, when Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives, the disciples approached him privately and asked, Tell us when this will take place. What sign will be given us of your coming and the end of the world? Jesus answered, Be on your guard and let no one mislead you. Many will come in my name, saying, I am the Messiah, and they will mislead many people. You will hear about wars and rumours of wars, but do not be troubled, for these things must happen, but the end is still to come. Nations will fight one another, and the kingdoms oppose one another. There will be famine and earthquakes in different places, but all this is only the beginning, the first pains of childbirth. Then they will arrest you, they will torture and kill you. All nations will hate you, for you bear my name. In those days, many will be led into sin, they will betray and hate one another. False prophets will appear and mislead many, and because of such great wickedness, love in many people will grow cold but the one who holds out to the end will be saved. The good news of the kingdom will be proclaimed throughout the world to all the nations, a testament to all peoples. Then will the end come. When you see what the prophet Daniel spoke about, the idol of the invader set up in the temple, let the reader understand. Then let those in Judea flee to the mountains. If you are on the housetop, do not come down to take anything with you. If you are in the field, do not turn back to fetch your coat. How hard it will be for pregnant women and for mothers with babies at the breast. Pray that you don't have to flee in winter or on a Sabbath, for there will be great tribulation, such as was never known from the beginning of the world until now, and is never to be known again. And if that time were not to be shortened, no one would survive. But God will shorten those days for the sake of his chosen ones, then if anyone says to you, Look, the Messiah is here, he is there, do not believe it. For false messiahs and false prophets will appear and perform signs and wonders so great that they will deceive even God's chosen people, if that were possible. See, I have told you everything ahead of time. So if anyone tells you, he is in the desert. Do not go. If they say, He is in the inner rooms, do not believe it. For the coming of the Son of Man will be like lightning, which flashes from the east even to the west. Wherever the body is, 
the vultures will gather. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for listening. May God bless you and heal you. I'm sending you his peace in abundance. May you always be happy and joyful in the Lord. And I have another book. Uh, I forget where I put it now, but it's somewhere nearby that I'm planning to record. I bought it with, with this Hungry for Jesus book at the same Catholic church, but it's a different author. And... Uh, I'm planning to share that with you. Uh, it's called Absolute Surrender. And uh, I have no idea what we're going to hear, but I know it's about the Holy Spirit. And it's going to be appropriate because um, Pentecost is coming up very, very soon. So I'll do an introdu the introduction and maybe the first part later god bless i'm going to share the uh, final prayer after reading sacred scripture i thank you holy spirit for the word you have spoken to me through the treasure of the scripture make these words a living reality in my life a constant guide a lamp for my feet and a light to my path amen God bless you all. Thank you so much for listening, sharing and commenting. I do appreciate it. Thank you. Have a wonderful evening. God bless.